Hello, New Hall. Welcome back. How are you will I? To Wisdom Wednesday with Johnny Tiger. The date is February 8, 2023. It is cold and dreary outside, but thanks to modern technology, you can still enjoy a slice of summer inside. Get some potted plants on the windowsill, or just look out the window if you have a nice tree in the backyard. Um, turn on the heater, put on your summer outfit, and either get your computer or your Echo device to play some cricket or cicada sound, like this. During one episode of the Soul Search Sunday before, I spoke about uh, the five pillars of happiness, and one of those pillars is uh, transcending uh, your current state. Uh, the pillar of transcending is to go above your current situation and your current state. And what I just described is one of those things that you can do uh, to make yourself feel happier and better. It doesn't matter that it's raging storm or dreary, cloudy day out there. You can still give yourself a slice of summer using what is available to you at this point in time. We really need to treasure this because a lot of people, even 20 years ago, would have a much harder time achieving this little piece of transcend, uh, transcending reality that we can do. Okay, I'm going to stop being philosophical and uh, we're going to start talking about Wisdom Wednesday. Today I want to talk about cicadas. And for those of you who, I'm sure most people have heard of cicadas and you sort of in your head you know what cicadas are. It's a bug that you hear making a lot of noise in the summertime. But I, I think if you're like me, after a while you kind of get confused. Okay, which one is cicadas? Which one is cricket? Uh, what do they sound like? So if you are kind of a little bit confused, this is in the background right now is what cicadas sound like. A very recognizable sound in a warm summer night. Yeah. And for those of you who have the Amazon Echo device, you can simply uh, ask for sleep sound, cicada sound, or just ask uh, your device to play cicada sound uh, to help you sleep. It's a nice little sleep aid for some people. The Chinese people have always had a fascination and uh, love for cicadas. For many, many years, thousands of years, Chinese people's life has been uh, interwoven, interwoven with cicadas and traces of what they do, what they are, and all that stuff. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that. First, if you are curious, to say cicadas in Mandarin is chan, chan. So it's like a C H U N, Chan. Uh, and the sound of the cicada is called Chan Ming. Chan Ming. Chan is cicada. Ming means uh, the call, the melody, the song uh, of something. Chan Ming is the song of cicadas. First, why? Do Chinese people have such a deep love and fascination for cicadas? Well, first let's look at what cicadas represent. Cicadas, the sound of cicadas usually is the sound you hear in summertime. And for most people, that is usually the happiest time of the year. It's a time of year where they have the happiest memories. 
the time of the year where the、uh, a lot of fun things happen, a lot of good things happen. Parties, concerts, uh, uh, weddings, and outdoor events, and uh, uh, fun and games, and staying up to watch the star sky and sitting in the yard and have to barbecue.、Uh, there's a lot going on in the summertime that. Even if you don't partake in those events now, you must remember some of these fun times, fun summer nights, summer days from your childhood. Swimming, swimming in the river,、uh, hanging out all day at、uh, friends' houses, and uh, uh, just wandering aimlessly through the town, looking for something to do. Yeah, those lazy, boring. Sometimes monotonous summer days, they have some very powerful memory. So the sound of cicadas is very nostalgic uh, for uh, Chinese people. Because of that, it's a it's a sound that brings back memory of happiness,、uh, of a fun and joyful time. The fascination for cicadas go even deeper. In that, adult cicadas—well, actually,、um, nymph cicadas. For those of you who, are, who don't know your bug terminology, nymph is what we call the、uh, juvenile form of insects. All right. So,、uh, cicadas—they feed almost exclusively on sap and. Uh, tree sap, plant sap.、Uh, so they burrow into the plant, the root, and they drink the sap from the plant. Traditionally speaking,、uh, Chinese people have always thought that cicadas、uh, survive on the dews. As you see, the the little、uh, the 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 morning dews you see on the leaves and bark in the morning, people didn't know that they were drinking the sap from inside the plant. So people assumed that cicadas were living off of the morning dews,、uh, the the little dri-、uh, driplets of、uh, condensation、uh, moisture that you see on plants in the morning. Now, why is this significant? Because morning dew、uh, in Chinese mythology,、uh, this is something that very, very sacred.、Uh, a lot of emperors in throughout Chinese history actually set out special collection plates, special collection、uh, vessels under trees and flowers and、uh, leaves. Just to collect that dew, because it was said that the dew must come down from heaven. So these were not regular water; these were uh, 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 elixirs from heaven itself. And if you drink enough of it, you can become immortal. Okay, so、uh, even now, if you go to a Chinese museum, a history museum, you will see. A lot of these dew collecting vessels that、uh, the emperors would have, and these were very, very、uh, sacred stuff,、uh, very religious, very ceremonial.、Uh, have, they have to be guarded very carefully. Okay, only the emperor were allowed to drink the dew that these、uh, vessels collect. And you can imagine, I mean, collecting dew from leaves and trees. And try to fill, never mind a a a a bucket. <laughs> Just try to fill a cup can take a while, right? So, uh, since Chinese people traditionally believe that uh dewdrop, the the morning dew, is linked to immortality, then it would follow that logic that the one insect that eats nothing but Morning dew would be immortal. So Chinese people have always romanticized cicadas as a bug that is immortal because they live.
purely on um, the dew they collect and the leaves. Now, of course, now nowadays we know that that's not what they're doing. They actually drink the sap from the plant. Um, so anyway, that that is one area where uh, you know beautiful folklore cannot withstand the uh, test of science. So uh, there's that. Um, another thing that really amazed Chinese people was the cicadas nymph. Again, that means the juvenile uh, form of cicadas can live underground from anywhere between two to seventeen years before they come up out of the ground, climb up a tree, and then they shed their outer shell, their exoskeleton, and grow wings and become adults. Okay, so this is a long and arduous journey. Now imagine this tiny little nymph uh, cicada that doesn't have wings, that live in underground, live, have to survive down there for 17 years, and then 17 years later, it come out of the ground, have to climb up the nearest tree, I imagine that climb is quite difficult, and then once it gets to the top of the tree, finally it can uh, molt and shed its exoskeleton and then grow wings and finally after all that become an adult. And the sad part is after they become an adult, they can only live for one month on average. So it's because of this long, uh, arduous transformation period that Chinese people viewed uh, cicadas as a symbol of hard-working people finally reaching the top. Uh, it, it's, they become a symbol of if you work hard, then one day you can get to the treetop and grow wings and fly high and sing loud like the cicadas. Cicadas became uh, a, almost an inspirational uh, insect to inspire people who were working hard and uh, trying to uh, climb up the corporate ladder or trying to improve their life. Secondly, to a lot of ancient Chinese people, this idea that the nymph of the cicada can live underground for 17 years is unimaginable. To them, that's not how it works. To them, what happened was the nymphs actually go underground and then they die, and then they come back to life. So the cicadas became a symbol of resurrection in early pagan religion. In fact, uh, in many, many of the ancient graves that had been excavated, people had found a little religious uh, device. It's a cicada made of the jade that was placed inside the mouth, right under the tongue of the deceased. Uh, so it was said that if you put the jade cicada in the mouth of the deceased, this will help the deceased uh, come back to life, uh, be resurrected and uh, get a second chance in life. Uh, or at the very least, help them to uh, move on to reincarnate much faster. So the cicada became this powerful symbol of reincarnation, rejuvenation, resurrection, because people believe that the way the, uh, the young cicadas can live so long underground and, and then come out and become adult after 17 years was a power of resurrection and uh, rejuvenation. Now let's have, look at how cicadas is still interwoven with uh, Chinese people's life, even in this modern era. Number one, uh, catching cicadas is quite a fun and game and a money maker 
for some poor people, some of the country folks. Uh, now, there's two different uh, forms of cicada catching. Uh, one is you want to catch the uh, nymphs just as they come out of the ground and they're climbing up that tree uh, before they turn into adults. You want to catch them the, uh, that way. So in the early summer time, uh, when the summer just starting and the nymphs of the cicadas just starting to come out of the ground, there's a lot of uh, Chinese people that would go out in the evening with flashlights and they will shine that flashlight on the tree trunk. And you will see a lot of young cicadas trying to climb up the tree so they can uh, do their transformation. And then you can just easily uh, pick them up with your finger and drop them in the jar that way. Okay. This is the uh, uh, first form of cicada hunting, is catching the young cicada. Why do people do that? Well, uh, sadly, some, of, some people uh, just like to take them home and watch them do their transformation thing at home. And some people think it's fun to watch that. But a lot of people will catch these young cicadas for food. Uh, apparently, they are quite tasty. It's not something that I care to try. But just in case you guys ever get a mind to try it, here is a recipe. I didn't make this up. This is a real way of cooking cicada. Now, you want to cook the cicada right after it molt. So it shed its exoskeleton, but before uh, the body grow uh, the new skin, before the wings come out. So you want to catch it right on that cusp between its transformation. And because this is when the uh, body of the cicada is the soft, softest. If you try to eat it after you grow wings, it's really hard. Um, so, after you catch the cicada, you take a big bowl of soy sauce and mix it with uh, red pepper and garlic and green onion, and then you drop the still living cicada into this mixture uh, and let them marinate for the entire evening. After a day, uh, you take this batch of marinated cicada and deep fry them like how you would deep fry shrimp or fish or stuff like that. Uh, I was told that it's a little bit like popcorn shrimp. Again, uh, it's not something that I want to personally try. I'll just take people's word for that. Uh, it's a little bit too disgusting for me. But hey, uh, no judgment. If you like it, you like it. The second form of cicada hunting is hunting for the adult. Now, hunting for adult cicada is very difficult because, well, first of all, they are very high up in the tree. Second, they can fly. So by the time you get up that tree, they fly away. Uh, and also, cicadas are quite a bit stronger than bugs like ladybugs or um, dragonfly. So catching them, you require something more sturdy, uh, more extreme. So what a lot of people end up doing is they uh, put glue at the end of long poles, and they pinpoint where the cicada noise is coming from, from inside uh, in the tree. And then they reach up with this pole with glue on the end and try to snag the cicada, get them stuck on the pole this way. There's also a almost sport-like way of hunting for cicada. It's very, very difficult, but some people can do this. Uh, rather than glue, they'll put a lasso made of uh, either wire, like really thin uh, fishing line, or piano wire, or even hair from a horse's tail. They'll put a lasso at the end of the stick, uh, long pole, and they'll try to lasso the cicadas. Honestly, I don't know how people can even develop this skill. If it's really, really difficult. But some people are so good at it, they really can lasso cicadas out, out of the tree this way. 
So what do you do with adult cicadas? Since they are obviously too uh, uh, tough to eat, they're no good for eating. Well, they still have their uses. A lot of people like to just keep them at home to listen to their sound to, uh, as a very primitive way of sleep sound. Or uh, because the female cicadas do not sing, so uh, the female cicadas usually end up becoming bird food. They People would sell them to uh, people who have bird, and supposedly eating live cicadas make the bird extra healthy or something like that. The exoskeleton that the cicada molt when they turn into adult is also a source of money for a lot of Chinese people because the exoskeleton of the uh, cicadas is a very important ingredient in a lot of Chinese medicine. So in the summertime, a lot of children, a lot of uh, children that don't have a, a good household or steady source of income will go out there and try to find the uh, exoskeleton from the cicadas in the trees and the ground and bring them to sell to uh, herbal medicine shops to get some pocket change. Cicadas is one of those uh, things that even though they are to a lot of people are just bugs that make a lot of noise, has a long cultural impact on Chinese people and has been seen represented in painting, in artwork, in sculptures, uh, and even now a lot of uh, pins and magnets and uh, little stationery uh, in China and Taiwan are still uh, characterized by the portrait or pictures of cicadas. So I hope that you enjoyed you enjoy today's uh, episode and uh, this little slice of summer that we have going on inside my house. We'll be back again tomorrow for some Toy Thursday. For now, don't forget, if you wish to find me on Instagram and Twitter and check out my artwork there, you can find me as at JohnnyTiger1981. For now, 谢谢, and 再见。